Out of all the Borderlands games I've played, that being Borderlands 1, 2, 3, and I once dipped my toes in the pre-sequel. Believe it or not, I've put the most time by far into Borderlands 3. As someone who played the games growing up, but by no means religiously or in a hardcore sense, I feel I have a unique perspective on the franchise, and with that comes an unpopular appreciation for the third mainline game in the series, that being Borderlands 3. Something I've noticed since the 2019 release of Borderlands 3 is that between the common online sentiment and even my personal friend group, there is a strong dislike, and I'd even go as far as to say hate for the game, Borderlands 3. So with that in mind today, I'd like to take a deep dive into the game and its predecessors and ask the question with you all, is Borderlands 3 really that bad? Let's find out. The Borderlands franchise puts you in the shoes of a Vault Hunter, meaning you as a player are tasked with opening legendary vaults to collect their prized legendary loot, which are originally based on the wasteland planet known as Pandora. Throughout all of the games, this is usually just an excuse to get you started along the main story, which tends to sprawl out into some much larger, but definitely quite hit or miss plots for sure. Don't get me wrong, the vaults almost always circle around to be integral to the story in one way or another, but most of the time, it's more about the heroes and the villains throughout the story rather than the vaults themselves. By the way, this video will probably have spoilers for all the games, so if you haven't played these yet, maybe crawl out from under that rock of yours and get to it. Diving into Borderlands 3 specifically, it sets you up with four fresh new vault hunters as every game does and sends you on your way to find an array of new vaults that sprawl not just Pandora, but the entire galaxy, which sets a much larger scope for the game than previous ones. The game very quickly establishes new villains, those being the Calypso Twins, quite a point of tension for the community. Then it launches you into space with the usual cast of Claptrap, Lilith, and pretty much any surviving member of the previous games, along with some new faces, or should I say new to me faces, as characters such as Reese were introduced in media I did not consume. This premise alone was super exciting for me, as I did start to feel like Pandora was getting a little stale after two full games, and I don't really know if you went back there for the pre-sequel, as I've played about 105 minutes of that game. Let's move on. Borderlands 3, just like the games before it, is a looter shooter. The main loop of the game, kill enemies and bosses, take their oh so precious loot and then do it again. This is obviously oversimplified, but I'm sure if you're watching this video, you have somewhat of an idea about what this game is. So now that the obvious stuff is out of the way, let's dive into what I think is the main point of tension with Borderlands 3, and that's the game's narrative. The main plot of Borderlands 3, in my opinion, is fine. I feel like most people would actually agree with that. I think it's more about the characters and how they are written that gets people upset. Starting with two big ones, the Calypso Twins. These villains are interesting to say the least. I actually love the idea of them. Twins who were neglected and abandoned so they crave attention and power, which they've found their own way of gaining through live streaming and manipulating psychos that don't know any better. They crave ultimate power, and that's a fine motivator, I guess. Nothing too crazy. But that being said, I do get why people don't like their dialogue. It's pretty rough more often than not, and really, I've got to say, a lot of the writing in Borderlands 3 is pretty bad most of the time. But here's the thing I don't get. Borderlands has always had pretty rough writing. Even great villains such as Handsome Jack who have infinite love from the fans and can do nothing wrong in their eyes. He's only really a few notes better than the twins. Sure you can get upset at cringe like God Queen Tyrene, but is Butt Stallion really any better? In my eyes, the type of writing in Borderlands 3 is just an extension of the writing from Borderlands 1 and 2. Maybe the audience who loved Borderlands 2 and its writing have actually just gotten older and don't find those jokes too funny anymore. Maybe it's not really Borderlands 3's fault. Now don't get me wrong, there are some great lines in Borderlands 2, especially from Handsome Jack, but there are some great character moments and lines in Borderlands 3 as well. So if we're in the business of being fair, then I gotta call out Butt Stallions along with the God Queens. Okay, so twins out the way, the rest of the writing is, well, it's not great. Especially Ava. Oh my goodness, I reckon Ava is a contender for the worst written video game character of all time. It's sad because if you do a little digging, there are actually some redemptive cutscenes that were removed from the game, but between her whining, getting Maya killed, blaming Lilith, and more, she's just the worst. I'll happily agree with the masses on that one. Alright, but in terms of actual gameplay, man, Borderlands 3 slaps. Honestly, the reason I've put so much time into Borderlands 3 is the damn good gunplay. Especially for 2019, it's top quality. Between the seemingly infinite guns, the over-the-top abilities, and the silky smooth combat, along with the movement, Borderlands 3 is a fantastic upgrade on previous games. Every gun feels unique and has its own little flair, which is crazy given the amount of guns you go through in this game. All the characters feel unique and usable. There's clear metas online, but you don't have to use that stuff if you just want to play through the game a couple times and enjoy yourself. The enemies are a little too spongy for me personally, especially as you get into the game's end game, if you want to call it an end game. But sponginess is nothing new in Borderlands, so I can't really fault it on that. 
The actual enemy design in the game is fine. Again, nothing too crazy different from previous games. I will say that the bosses in Borderlands 3 are usually one of two extremes. Either extremely boring bullet sponges that just walk around an arena, or extremely cool and well thought out bosses with fun mechanics and challenges. There isn't really an in-between. Mission design is somewhere the game lacks heavily. Most missions consist of going there and killing enemies, which gets old pretty quickly. I will say, Eden 6 aka the Swamp Planet has some really big pacing issues. It's rough, but the finale of that planet, and the mansion specifically, I had a great time in. Other than that, all the planets are awesomely designed in terms of art direction, and all the little corners, crevices, and secrets make it fun to explore. So putting all that gameplay together, what do we have? Well, honestly, a damn good time. The game is so smooth to play. The guns feel so great and tangible outside of a few sniper rifles, which I notice don't have much recoil. But despite that, they all feel solid. Whipping out a crazy shotgun followed by a wild nuke-looking rocket launcher, it's just plain fun. Even though the mission design somewhat lacks, the actual minute-to-minute -minute gameplay is endlessly fun. Build crafting is genuinely awesome. Without the need for live service starred PvE slash PvP balancing, Borderlands 3 is able to let you live out a crazy power fantasy, and it feels great. All the playable characters are completely different from one another. My first ever playthrough I played Zayn, and I loved how he played entirely different from my second playthrough as Amara. Sometimes it almost feels like a different game. I'm currently playing through Flak for the first time, and I love it. I can't wait to jump in with the fourth character Mose. She has a literal mech. I'm excited. Earlier I mentioned the end game, and while yes, Borderlands series has an end game, it's never really been something that I've fully engaged with. Until Borderlands 3. The activities you can play within the end game of Borderlands 3 are awesome. Fighting the Invincibles, doing a Malawan takedown, the Slaughter Star, being able to play the entire game again on increasingly crazy difficulties. I could go on forever, but you get my point. Almost all the game is set up to be an end game, and that's really cool. Thanks to the Mayhem system, which essentially allows you to toggle the difficulty as high or as low as you want. With increased difficulty comes increased loot luck and drop chance, which gives an awesome incentive to grind those higher levels if you want to see those sweet, sweet legendary drops. Speaking of loot, this is one factor to Borderlands 3 I've seen a lot of people dislike. But I'm not gonna lie, I saw how you could endlessly grind bosses in Borderlands 2 for the slight chance of a legendary you wanted. And like, that's all well and good, but to me, it didn't really show any skill or anything worthwhile. It just kind of looked like you had a lot of free time on your hands. Sorry. Here in Borderlands 3, I think they fixed this issue. For players like myself who just want to try and get all the cool weapons, there's plenty of decent drop chances for most legendaries in the game. Just a few farms of a boss will get you a decent variant of their legendary weapon. But when it comes to hardcore players making those min-max builds with insane RNG gun drops, thanks to the anointed weapon system, which basically means guns can drop with an often very powerful anointment, and it synergizes with particular builds and characters, getting that min-max roll for people who want to grind for hours and hours on the same boss, you can do that. I don't think this system is perfect, and I do agree that legendaries drop too easily and too early, at least during the campaign in the early game. And I do agree that different rarity systems past legendary would be ideal to help fix this problem. Problem. But the devs have said that due to console limitations, they couldn't add any more. And honestly, to me, the anointment system seems to be their answer to making the same systems as Borderlands 2 more accessible to a general audience. Which, even if not executed perfectly, at least they gave it a good shot. I'll be honest, I for one was never going to spend hours upon hours grinding the same boss for a 1% chance at a roll on a legendary gun. I can imagine the fan base of Borderlands 2 will tell me that Borderlands just isn't for you, or it's not your kind of game. But I think that with Borderlands 3, the devs said, actually, this game can be for you too. And I think that's great. When Borderlands 4 does eventually come around, they can take this experience and they can use it to craft something that hopefully new fans and hardcore fans alike will enjoy together. Borderlands 3 may be the ugly duckling of the franchise, according to many longtime fans, but for me, as someone who loves crisp and clean first person shooters with lots of content and good content at that, someone who doesn't have a billion hours to sink into getting that one cool gun, someone who doesn't mind tuning out the occasional mixed bag of dialogue, and someone who is okay with certain characters changing and evolving over the games, Borderlands 3 is my favourite Borderlands game, and I love it. It's great in so many ways, and yeah, it's far from perfect, but so many of my favorite games have big, gaping flaws in them. And I think that's okay. So hey, if you've made it this far, then thank you. This channel has been so much fun to create content for, and I'm loving hanging out with you all. Feel free to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it, and if you enjoy my style of video essay content, then maybe even subscribe. Have a blessed rest of your day. Hopefully, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.